Think back to when you first learned how to use a computer. Of course, there are many fundamentals you need to grasp, whether you're browsing the internet or just playing games, but what would you say is the most basic principle for regular computer usage? Well, you could give a lot of answers, but one of them is typing. And who better to teach you how to type than SpongeBob SquarePants himself? Throughout the early 2000s, many SpongeBob video games were made for computers by a company called AWE. They started off with classics such as Operation Krabby Patty and Employee of the Month, but they also adapted popular games like Battle for Bikini Bottom in the movie. However, this video has nothing to do with them. In 2004, for the first time, the task of bringing the sponge to computer screens fell on another company. They were called The Learning Company. Just as the name so appropriately suggests, they made games that helped you learn. Sorry, AWE, we'll talk about you again some other time. The Learning Company was founded in 1980 by a group of people who were inspired by the Apple II computer to create video games that could educate children and teach them problem-solving skills. They gained notoriety when they purchased the rights to the highly popular Carmen Sandiego series. However, most people might know them for the Clue Finders series, a franchise that helped build the childhoods of many children in the early 2000s. Their catalog of games is quite expansive, and it would take forever to go over all the important ones. However, today I'd like to take a look at one of the least important games this company ever came out with, SpongeBob SquarePants Typing. Before we get into it, I'd just like to share a personal story I have relating to this little game here. For many years, I could have sworn the title was SpongeBob Teaches Typing. I remember reading it on the box and referring to it by that name whenever I'd mention it to someone. It was only all these years later that I found out it was actually called SpongeBob SquarePants Typing. To be honest, I don't think I want to accept this. There's no way my memory was so far off the mark. Someone must have used a time machine to go back exclusively to change the name of this obscure game only me and nine other people played. Anyway, by 2004, typing games were few and far between. Many people may recall the 80s game Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing, but me personally, I like to think of Type to Learn 3. Since computers were slowly working their way into everyone's day-to-day -day life, kids needed to be taught proper keyboard etiquette. Not that many of us really listen to any of those lessons, but they're still good to know. Actually listening to them will do wonders for your posture. So without further delay, let's learn all about the wonders of keyboarding with our favorite piece of cheese, SpongeBob SquarePants. Right out of the gate, we are introduced to the voice of SpongeBob himself as he navigates us through the menus and tells us what everything does. You have to type your name in and he actually reads the letters out loud as you hit them. I see no way this could possibly backfire. F. U. C. When we get to the opening cutscene, we're immediately hit with a slight disappointment. Take a look. Hello? What's this? As we've come to expect in the SpongeBob video games, Mr. Krabs is not voiced by the legendary Clancy Brown. Normally, this wouldn't bother me since I thought his new voice actor was fine in the other games, but this one doesn't really sit too well with me. This cash register is broken and I can't get me money out! Does it make money? Come and get it! Well, I'll be! Mr. Krabs finds a typewriter in the jarringly realistic looking dumpster and decides to make money by selling it as a sandwich. That doesn't work, so he decides to hold a typing contest instead. The prize? A peanut butter and jellyfish jelly sandwich. It's a fair setup for what the game is. It puts the player in the universe and gives an in-story reason for why they need to type. Because everyone in Bikini Bottom wants the peanut butter and jellyfish jelly sandwich, they all sign up for the contest, including SpongeBob. He says he doesn't know how to type, but his friend does, then he motions to the camera. I remember feeling so flattered Spongebob himself called me his friend. They really knew how to touch the hearts of their young fans with that one. So, in-universe, you're Spongebob's typing buddy, and you have to help him win the competition. I'm sure that's cheating, but maybe Spongebob paid extra for it. We are then brought to the main menu, which has a surprisingly heavy selection of stuff to do. I mean, it is the learning company, so they didn't hold anything back. In the options, you can see useful tips and even check notes on your progress, such as keys you're good at typing versus ones you're struggling with. Really good on TLC for keeping note of that. You can either go to Larry's Sign Place to practice typing, Glove World to play games, or the Krusty Krab to take part in the tournament. It's basically story mode. When we take a look at the practice mode, we get a bunch of stories or facts that we need to type out in order to hone our typing skills. Some of the stories are taken from various episodes, and others are original. The weirdest one I found is one where Mrs. Puff starts a basket weaving class and Patrick's... arm falls off? I don't want to read that when I'm making my fingers hurt while playing this. 
When you check out Glove World, you're given a small but effective selection of minigames. You can even control the difficulty, which can be cool if you want to give yourself a challenge. However, I do have a little note about this. They gave Mr. Krabs a lot of lines. It's Gary in a race against Slime Biscuit. It's a snail's pace race. Pick any activity to sharpen your typing skills. He narrates both the menu and the Do Re Mi game, which is fine and all, but it's kind of weird that they didn't try to minimize his role when they couldn't get his actual voice actor to play him. If I knew that wasn't Mr. Krabs' real voice as a kid, I'm sure most other kids my age knew it too. The first game is called Snail's Pace Race, where you're helping Gary in a snail race against an original character named Slime Biscuit. You know, whenever the Spongebob games introduce a new character, I can't help but be fascinated by them. What is their story? Why are they here? Who does Slime Biscuit even belong to? He belongs in the same category as Marlin from Employee of the Month, Morty from the Movie on PC, and Prawn from Battle for Bikini Bottom. We need more of you guys. Basically, you just type words on the screen until Gary makes it to the end. SpongeBob is the announcer, and he gives a pretty funny commentary sometimes. I think Slime Biscuit is an eyeball ahead! It's Slime Biscuit by an eyeball! It's probably the easiest of all the games. Also, the snails are chasing a head of lettuce. Do snails actually eat lettuce? Oh, so they do. Sorry I ever doubted you. The second game is the exact same, only it's Spongebob driving. When you get a letter wrong, something splatters on your windshield and creates even more of a distraction. It also doesn't help that there are people cheering you on, so their voices encourage me to look up at them, so I end up missing keys because of it. If that was the intention, it's a fine obstacle. The next one freaked me out when I first played it. Apparently, Patrick's lost his senses, so Spongebob shrinks himself down and goes into his brain to find them. This game is far more involved than the ones before it. You have to hit keys to make Spongebob move to the tiles that correlate with them, then you have to work your way to Patrick's missing senses. These include his ability to smell, see, eat, etc. If you hit the cloud bubbles, you have to type a bunch of words really quickly because you're being timed, but they're really easy to avoid. If I was really strapped for time, I would simply avoid them. Harder difficulties also give you these enemies that kill you, but again, they're easy to avoid as long as you go around them. Next up is Do Re Mi, which is where you select a song to play on the keyboard. No, not a literal keyboard, but I think this game missed the opportunity for a joke there. I know there's supposed to be songs from the game, but most of them just sound like strange renditions of Yankee Doodle. We just need to get Maestro from Jumpstart in here and it'll be perfect. Lastly, we have my personal favorite game of the bunch, A Star is Born. In it, you have to type a bunch of words to determine an article of clothing Patrick wears. For every three words of the same color you spell, you give him an article from the same category. The categories are a waitress, a U.S. Constitution signer, a hula skirt surfer dude, a nerd, and Elvis. Blue Hawaii, I look good. It's a very strange selection of outfits, but you can't say it isn't unique. The real fun comes when you mix and match, making completely chaotic outfits that do not go together at all. Also, what's with some of these word choices? Okay, enough of that. Now let's get on to the competition. This is what the game is all about, isn't it? Fully animated cutscenes and everything. Let's take a look at it. Before it begins, a realistic fish head talks to you about ergonomics and explains proper posture for using a keyboard. Typing posture. If you don't sit properly, you may experience back, arm, or shoulder pain. You might even end up looking like this. Believe me, this line terrified me when I first saw it. There was no better way to get me to fix my posture than telling me I'd end up looking like that. As you progress through the game, you have to compete against various Spongebob characters, starting with Patrick. The cutscenes are pretty charming. Uh, I'll have two Krabby Patties and an order of fries. Now here's where it gets interesting. At first, I planned to just mindlessly type through the game to get some footage, but it turned out to be much more challenging than I anticipated. As I went on, I actually realized, wait a minute, I might have to start taking this seriously. Once I beat Patrick, I assumed the correct posture and got ready to start typing like a kid in computer class. Basically, Spongebob says some creepy stuff as he teaches you how to properly hit keys. Just pretend that I'm not here, watching your every move. 
You have to match the prompts on the screen and type through all of them. You work your way through each of the characters, and you can even see the silhouettes of ones to come. I remember theorizing who that one could possibly be. When you beat an opponent, you get a personalized certificate saying you beat them. You can print them out and tell all your friends you're a better typer than Squidward Tentacles. The challengers get harder and harder, as can be expected, and if you play this in one sitting, your fingers will very likely fall off. The only way to truly win the tournament is to do it the way the game taught you to. Not only will this teach you how to type, it'll give you the strongest fingers imaginable. You'll be doing 200 finger push-ups after a week of playing this. It really gets you moving. If you aren't prepared, this game will really kick your butt. Well, this time I came prepared. Ready when you are, Flat. <laughs> Every so often, you'll take a break to play one of the games we talked about earlier. In all honesty, I really don't like this feature. The games are playable at any time, so there's no reason to break you away from the competition to play them. They're a lot more fun when you don't have such high stakes in the background. Plus, you'll just wear out your fingers even more. Once you work your way through Patrick, Gary, Mr. Krabs, Flats, and Mrs. Puff, you reach a very interesting finale. You're given a choice to take on Plankton, Squidward, or Sandy, but you only need to beat Sandy in order to win. I guess it was kind of them to give more advanced typists the option to just skip to the end from there. When you challenge Sandy, you have to beat her astounding record of words per minute. If you want that sandwich, you have to dethrone the queen. Only when your fingers have burned so many calories that they're basically just bones, your spine has positioned itself into a permanently upright position, and your vision has gone blurry from looking at a computer screen for so long, you will be able to win the championship and get that sandwich. Man, is that a tasty victory. So, this is a very good game. I mean it. As a tool for teaching kids how to type, this is actually amazing. It has a nice variety of activities to keep fans of Spongebob engaged, it puts the player in the universe and makes the learning process feel that much more exciting, and it educates in a way that makes sense in the Spongebob mythos. It feels like a game that fully plans to both teach and entertain the player. Sometimes it's hard to find that perfect balance. I would actually go as far as to recommend this game even in the modern age. No matter how good you are at typing, SpongeBob SquarePants typing is adjustable and great for helping you better your skills. If you're going into a line of work that requires you to have a good words per minute, this might actually be a nice way to practice getting it up. It has so many options that you'll never run out of ways to have fun with it. I would definitely rank this as one of the best PC games SpongeBob has to offer. All that being said, I still firmly believe the title is Spongebob Teaches Typing. Seriously, who changed it? I'd like a word with whoever you are. Aside from that, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next memory.